You're listening to the Get the Pancake podcast, helping volleyball coaches have their best season yet. Hi, coaches. It's Whitney from the Get the Pancake podcast. And on today's episode, I'm actually going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm releasing a video to go along with the podcast. So if you want to watch the video, go ahead and just click over to the Get the Pancake YouTube channel if you're not there already. And then we can get a little more FaceTime. I thought it would just be a fun way to engage with everyone a little bit more. Anyway, the podcast today is all about using cue words and phrases and combining that with hand signals. Now, when I say cue, I'm saying C-U-E. And essentially what a cue is, is you are conveying a pretty complex message within one word or maybe a couple of words, like a short phrase. And we're going to pair that with hand signals. And I'll get to that in just a second. I think this topic is so crucial for everyone right now because I know many of you coaches are coaching during COVID and a lot of you have to wear masks. So that presents a huge challenge when it comes to coaching and communicating with your players. Although we want our players to be confident in themselves on the court and make sure that we give them as much information ahead of time, we do still need to coach. And so what we want to do is prepare our team sort of with cue words, cue phrases, and hand signals. That way, when we're trying to get them a lot of information, especially if it's something that happens a lot, it's not that difficult to explain. And you're going to be able to use your hands so that the mask doesn't impede that message. So yes, we are dealing with a challenge right now with masks and not being able to communicate as efficiently as we'd like, but also think about timeouts. So eventually I'm assuming we won't need to wear masks when we're coaching, but you can still use these principles after this time has passed because timeouts or a quick dead ball in between rallies when you need to get a lot of information to your players, this is the perfect time to use these cue phrases and hand signals. We don't have a lot of time between plays or between matches. So I think it's pretty clear that cueing and hand signals are going to be critical for every coach. But I also think the topics that we're covering today are important for quiet coaches. Like myself, I my voice does not carry in a gym. I really wish it did. But I can't tell you how many times I've been standing on the sidelines and even my right back can't hear what I'm saying, even if I'm right next to her. So this is why I have really embraced keywords and hand signals in my own coaching experience. And I want to share that with you to help you communicate more effectively with your team. So although keywords are typically associated with techniques and instructing our players through like form work or teaching them a skill, I think they can also be used to change your team's mindset. And I'll give you some examples throughout the episode, but I want you to think of these phrases as really kind of getting to the core of your coaching philosophy as well. I think it has a lot of potential once you start to come up with your keywords, cue phrases. You'll probably notice a pattern in the things that you say the most to your team. I think that's pretty cool that you start to get a better understanding of what you value as a coach and what's important to you. And then finally, using these keywords and cue phrases really helps simplify the concept, not only in your player's mind, but in your mind as well. So if you are taking this big, huge concept or maybe like breaking down arm swing into just a couple of words instead of okay, then we lift our hands and then we bring our elbow back and our left hand stays up. That's a lot of information. But as you'll find with cueing, a really popular cue phrase, I guess, with our arm swing is bow and arrow. So we're just going to bring the bow and arrow back and kind of tilt up a little bit. And that's all. So instead of 
you know, the lengthy description of how to hold your arms and where to swing your arms. Instead, we can just say, pretend you have a bow and arrow. Now let me see you pull that arrow back and then just tip up a little. From then on, all you have to say to your players is bow and arrow. That will get the main concept through to probably 80, 85% of your players. And this is really great with those young kids. And when you're working with like a camp or a clinic and you need to get information out there fast, it makes it fun for the kids. It's easy to understand and it's pretty effective. From there, you can make small tweaks with, oh, well, your elbow's a little low. Let's raise that elbow up. But using the basic keywords is going to get most of your players doing the right thing for the most part. <laughs> so that was just one example of keywords. And obviously you have the hand signals that go along with that. So if you're in a match and you know, you've got the mask on, you're not able to communicate. All you need to do is hold up that bow and arrow to your player. If they're, you know, not doing their arm swing properly and they'll just look at you and be like, okay, coach, you don't need to communicate a lot of information. Just hold up the bow and arrow or whatever issue it is, have a hand signal and a short phrase that goes along with the most common mistakes that your players make. And just to make sure you understand how important this is, I want to sort of paint a picture for you. Um, this is probably a scenario that many of us are familiar with. I know I am, unfortunately, but let's just transport ourselves to a volleyball court and picture your team is down 16 to 17. You have the serve, but the serve goes out you lose it at 16, 18. This is when I really start to feel the pressure with my teams is right around that 17 point mark. That's really when the end of the game, it's staring you in the face. So you're down 16 to 18. And all of a sudden you look out onto the court and you realize that your outside hitter is supposed to be dropping back into serve receive, but she's just up at the net or she's in the wrong spot. And so because of that, everyone has just adjusted to where the player is standing. And now they're all in the wrong spot and they're even out of rotation. If the official notices you're going to get called for being out of rotation and lose a critical point, every point is important, but this in my mind is super critical to at least have a chance at winning this point. So in this situation, if you haven't practiced getting their attention, you know, you might be like, Priya, what are you doing? Come on, step backwards. You're supposed to be in the left back right now. Megan, get over. You're supposed to be in middle back. What are you guys doing? And don't even try and tell me that you haven't <laughs> said those things before, um, especially with these younger players who are learning their rotations for the first time. That happens to all of us. But uh, instead, what I use with my teams and I reinforce this verbiage and the hand signals through practices. I just tell my players swing. And in my mind, it looks like a swing set going back and forth. So when the player, let's say it's a front row player needs to step back, everyone sort of swings to the side. And that's why I use the word swing. I'm not sure if that's common or not, but that's what I say. That's what my uh, high school coach said. And it made a lot of sense to me. So I have continued using it. And if your team is out of rotation and you say, Priya, swing, all of a sudden she realizes, oh, I need to step back. And everyone else on the court realizes, oh, I need to step over to the side. We're out of rotation right now. And it's just one word, one hand motion, swing. I kind of take my hand and pull it towards myself, but you can have whatever hand motion you want. But as soon as I say that, the entire team starts to parrot it and they say, swing, swing, swing. And they all know what that means. They instinctively, because of repetitions in practice, they know that they need to change where they're standing on the court. They're not looking at me confused. Let's, let's go back to the first example. If I'm saying, Priya, you need to be in left back. Megan, you need to step over into middle back. What are you doing? You guys are out of rotation. The up ref is going to blow their whistle. The other team is going to serve and it's going to drop in between Priya and Megan. I'm going to say nine times out of 10 because one of them is going to be confused, looking at me, not sure what's going on. And then they're not going to know whose ball it is. 
because they don't really hear me, especially now if we have our masks on, they're going to have an even harder time understanding what we're saying. So use practice time to reinforce cue words, cue phrases, and hand signals. And in normal coaching times, I would say you don't have to necessarily point out what the cue words and phrases are or what the hand signals are, but have a discussion with your team and let them know, okay, you guys are going to have a hard time hearing me and understanding me. So when I do this and follow that up with your hand signal, this hand signal means swing. When I say swing, it means that someone from front row needs to step back and it can be on either side. It could be, you know, uh, whoever's in right front might need to swing back. Depending on how you set up for serve receive or what rotation you're in, explain to them what the cue word is, what the cue phrase is, what the hand signals are, and that's going to go a long way in making your communication more efficient during a match. So like I said, cue words and cue phrases are typically used when we're talking about technique. I'm gonna give another example of mindset work though real quick because I think this is a really important phrase or word to use with your team, uh, and that is reset or have some sort of a word that kind of reminds your team, okay guys, chill out. And I like to use reset because it's sort of like you're just hitting the reset button. It's like, okay, we're back to normal. Let's calm down. And I found that players will instinctively take a deep breath. And they'll relax a little bit when you say reset. And when I usually use this keyword is after a crazy play has happened. Maybe, um, maybe we had a pretty bad pass on the first contact. And so players were having to run around and chase the ball, trying to get it back over. Potentially there's just a ton of out of system play going on. Maybe it's really quick. There's a lot of blocks going on or, um, it's just a hectic play. And when that happens, your team, their eyes just get wider and you know, they look really tense and that's when you need to use, okay guys, reset. And my hand signal for that is just to hold my hands out in front of me with my palms facing down and just push towards the ground. Just, whew, just reset. You know your team best. You're going to be able to come up with something that works for them. Choose something that works for you. Just because I say reset and that has worked for me with pretty much every team that I've coached doesn't mean it's going to work for you. I think these are all very individual and personal, especially when it comes to the mindset side. Come up with things that really show your values and your coaching style. Maybe instead of reset, you want to say breathe. It's essentially the same thing, or you might come up with something different. So I'd be really interested to hear how you calm your teams down in those tense situations. And if you have a cue phrase and what your hand signal either is or come up with a hand signal to communicate that with your team if you have a face mask on or if you're trying to communicate that during a timeout because you don't have a lot of time. But let's talk about techniques and keywords. This is when it's most frequently used. We'll just start with serving. I'm going to share some ideas for younger players and I'm talking maybe freshman level if they haven't played before, but probably closer to that seventh grade level. I say beginner, but that's a really difficult term to define because that really could be any age, but it's more like someone who has maybe only a year or two of experience or if they're younger, even if they have a lot of experience. Let me tell you the keywords that I use when I'm teaching serving to our youngest players. This is um, overhand serving. I'm just gonna say lift, high five. It's pretty simple, right? Obviously, there are going to be a lot of adjustments that we make to that serve, but starting with lift, high five, a majority of your team is going to have a certain degree of success. They might not all go over, they might not all go in, but if you give them that prompt, you're going to be off to a good start. Also with serving, I like to use the keyword laser. Um, I always tell my players, especially if they're really getting under the ball and serving it up and over, I'm telling them that's a rainbow serve. We want a laser serve. And I emphasize the need to get behind the ball 
and hit more in the center of the ball. And I explained that's the difference between a rainbow and a laser. So if a player during a match is serving it up nice and high, I'm like, what are you serving those rainbows for? Serve a laser. And, you know, I just, for the hand signal, I just take my hand and kind of shoot it out like a laser. Um, and you can probably imagine what a rainbow would look like as well. But keep it fun. Use fun words, especially in volleyball. There's no reason to be super serious all the time. Use words that your players are going to remember. When we're talking about passing, something that a coach that I used to work with, um, she would say split and balance. And that is to cue players to um, essentially stop moving and find their balance as soon as contact is made by your opponent when you're in defense. So if they're going up to hit the ball, as soon as contact is made, that's when you want to split your feet and make sure that you're balanced. So that is an example of cue words and cue phrases for passing. For setting, we want to think about our wrists as trampolines. I've heard that all over and I think that that is brilliant. When I was younger, we learned, you know, hold the bucket of water on your head and then dump it out. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, especially at the younger ages. Setting techniques are changing though. So I would recommend that you look into current setting practices. I will include links to a couple of different setting Instagram accounts because I think they do a good job of breaking down setting techniques. So I will include links to those accounts for you to go and check out the words that they're using in their training. We already talked about with hitting, you know, doing bow and arrow. And with blocking, I would say a good keyword, although younger players probably aren't gonna be doing this as much, but um, like, earmuffs. So uh, when you're holding your hands up in the air, you're kind of trying to squish earmuffs onto your ears by shrugging those shoulders up to get a little extra reach. And these are all just examples. If you would like to comment on this episode, especially if you're watching on YouTube, let me know what keywords and cue phrases and hand signals you use with your players, whether it's teaching fifth graders how to pass a volleyball or working on critiquing common mistakes with 17 year olds on their hitting. I would really just love to hear what keywords and cue phrases you guys are using out there. I hope I have communicated the importance of finding just one or two words to communicate a pretty complex issue, making sure that it's fun or easy to remember, and then associating that phrase with a hand signal so that when you're really far away from your team or when the gym is too loud or when you only have a short amount of time in a timeout, you can communicate these broad concepts with your players. And that is all I have for you this week. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Get the Pancake podcast. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe or follow the podcast in your favorite podcasting app or subscribe to Get the Pancake on YouTube. I appreciate you all so much and I can't wait to have you back for next week's episode.